Hello there, welcome to Topic 5. I just want to say at the outset, congratulations for getting this far. You've covered four really important topics, and today we talk about one final step in this initial team scenario, talking about feedback strategies. On completion of this video, you'll already have reached the halfway point in our 10 topic basic series. It's great progress and hopefully by now you're starting to see some positive results with your team's performance and the business improvement itself. Armed with all of this preparation and the steps covered during the first four topics, we're now ready to launch into feedback. This can be a risky part of the whole process and it has the potential to unravel all of your hard work. But the good news is, with the right planning and consideration, it can also be highly rewarding and fruitful for both the employee and you as the leader. So as you may recall in topic four, we've already identified that our online gamers thrive when they can see progress and receive instant feedback, which means that all four of our generations are open and even seeking feedback, provided you learn how to correctly provide that. So let's get started. Starting with strategy one, soliciting constructive feedback. Based on the advances being made in understanding the human mind through neuroscience studies, we're all beginning to realize a need to rethink our traditional ways with one of the most important areas of leadership, and that's feedback. Therefore, from the outset, we're going to flip this feedback topic on its head. So, as I mentioned, numerous studies are now pointing us in the direction of ensuring the first feedback strategy is for leaders and their teams to understand the importance of soliciting feedback itself. And this becomes a precursor to the leader providing any further feedback. The research is suggesting that there's various advantages for an employee who solicits constructive feedback apart of course from the studies showing that they tend to be more successful overall, it shows that they're perceived by their leaders and their colleagues as being more approachable with a willingness to improve. An interesting question which may arise from your employees is why do we need to receive feedback at all? Well, the answer is that it performs a valuable role in a multiple of ways, from improving self-awareness, enhancing self-esteem, raising morale, engaging people to want to learn, offering reassurance, provides motivation, and improves individual performance. So let's continue by digging a little deeper into the science of what happens in our brain when we receive feedback, be it good or bad. So why is soliciting feedback so important? Do you recall our SCARF model discussions from topic two and the threat or reward reaction based on how our brain perceives the situation? The same amygdala reaction is at play here. Positive feedback is seen as a reward, while negative feedback, which we refer to as constructive feedback, is seen as a threat. Hence, the importance of every employee understanding the feedback process and the approach, so that they can have an opportunity to prepare their brains ahead of this feedback. In particular, receiving constructive feedback can be emotionally draining when taken as a personal affront. It's hard for us to feel like we're wrong, and it's even harder for us to hear it from somebody else. According to the studies, our brains look to protect us when we hear information that conflicts with our own self-image and our instinct is to first change the information rather than change ourselves. Another unique thing about criticism is that we often don't remember it accurately, despite the fact that we seldom forget receiving it. Professor Clifford Nass from Stanford University says almost everyone remembers negative things more strongly and in more detail. It's called a negativity bias. Our brains have evolved separate, more sensitive circuits to handle negative information and events. And they process the bad stuff more thoroughly than the positive things. That means receiving criticism 
will always have a greater impact than receiving praise. So hopefully from this short intro, you can see the value of first studying about our hardwired reactions and how to cope with them more successfully. Now to look at the way to solicit feedback as a leader, which is invaluable and we can gain so much powerful insight from our employees. Whilst it might seem awkward to turn the tables, asking your team members to provide feedback on your performance as a leader, it can also help you strengthen that performance and build a stronger bond with your team. A couple of ways to approach this in the first instance without making anyone feel uncomfortable is to ask, how can I make your job easier? Or perhaps you might say, what type of support could I offer to help you perform your job better? One underlying consideration in order to receive genuine feedback is that trust must exist between the leader and their team. To support that trust, here are five tips for ways in which to respond when receiving feedback from your team. Number one, be open. Number two, don't take it personally. Number three, don't argue. Number four, consider it a skill and practice it. And finally, number five, thank the person who delivered this feedback to you. Talking one-on-one -on -one with your employees is a great way to collect employee feedback on engagement and satisfaction. However, there's a multiple ways to obtain this feedback. Consider the following additional methods to ensure variety and depth. In today's technology-driven environment, establishing a means for employees to leave anonymous comments or suggestions is a common practice. The use of larger employee surveys can be quite expensive but it is highly insightful. And one tool which we use regularly is Yohari's window, a great way to deepen trust and obtain feedback. We'll provide a link in our show notes for you to explore that further. Moving on now to our preparation, whether it's for informal or formal feedback sessions. So we've taken that important first step and educated everyone on why and how to receive feedback. It's now time to look at delivering this feedback. According to the Gallup report, meaningful employee feedback increases the employee's engagement and they would prefer to receive negative feedback than no feedback at all. It found that an employee who is ignored by the manager is twice as likely to be actively disengaged at work as an employee whose manager focuses on his or her weaknesses. Likewise, receiving feedback from employees can offer valuable insights that can help leaders become stronger and more efficient in their roles. Feedback can motivate individuals and teams, facilitate the resolution to a specific challenge, open lines of communication, foster employee professional development, and increase employee engagement. The way in which you provide feedback to employees has a tremendous impact on its effect. These strategies can help you deliver feedback that is both powerful and productive. For the remainder of this discussion, we'll look at four key areas. Our preparation, informal feedback, formal feedback, and feedback techniques. So now moving into strategy two, looking at the feedback preparation. A favourite and famous quote from the ULCA head coach John Wooden is, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And it provides a great opening reminder for us here about the importance of this second strategy. Doing anything well requires effort and thought. Consider the feedback culture of the organisation. Consider the background leading to this feedback. Will it be perceived as a reward or a threat discussion? What's the best location based on whether it's going to be a formal or informal discussion? If formal, what's the best time of day for scheduling it? What does it relate to? Is the feedback on an individual basis or is it related to a team project or perhaps an even broader performance review? Depending on the situation, there's likely to be numerous other considerations. Great constructive feedback requires preparation on your part. You can't just offer someone feedback 
as you're running to another meeting. They likely have questions for you and when you give someone feedback, most likely they're going to want to give a response and spend more time reviewing. Whether they react defensively or want to truly understand the situation, a few brief sentences or words are not going to be enough. Have you planned the entire process and thought through the likely responses together with how you're going to reply? Here are some additional considerations regardless of whether it's formal or informal feedback. Is the leader credible in the eyes of the recipient? Is the leader trusted by the recipient? Is the recipient feedback conveyed with good intentions? Is your feedback fair, accurate and directly applicable to the employee's task? Do your comments focus on single behaviours that direct the employer's attention to a few specific and important improvements? Were any of the current development areas discussed previously? And finally, before starting, here's several mistakes which you should try and avoid. The first, and very common for all of us, talking too much and not allowing time for the recipient to respond. Number two, failing to listen to the recipient's feedback. Number three, providing the solution without input from the recipient. Four, not connecting follow-up plans to review the progress. The key takeaways to remember is that feedback is a two-way conversation. The better you are prepared, the easier it will be to be relaxed, to listen, and to seek a joint solution. So now moving on to strategy three and looking at informal feedback opportunities. As a manager, ongoing informal feedback can help you recognize an employee's accomplishments and improve performance in real time. Informal feedback that is sincere, fair and accurate can considerably improve performance even as much as 39% according to one survey. Feedback can be positive or constructive. Give positive feedback to recognize and reinforce actions or behaviors that you value and want to continue. Provide constructive feedback to identify actions or behaviors that weren't effective or offer alternatives and suggestions for improvement for the next time the situation arises. Offering guidance on improvement is critical. Without it, the person will be uncertain as to how to avoid the same or similar issues in the future. Here's a simple four letter acronym to help you remember this basic informal feedback technique. It's called FAST, which stands for frequent, actionable, specific, and timely. I'm always reminded of the methods outlined in the book the One Minute Manager, written by Ken Blanchard and Spence Johnson, when we speak about informal feedback. If you don't know it, we'll include the link in our notes. So now moving on to strategy four, formal feedback opportunities. We now move on to formal feedback and note that this will exclude discussion on the annual performance review, as we're going to cover that issue during the next video. For now, we turn our focus to formal settings related to face-to-face -face progress or completion reviews for assigned tasks. Ensuring that you have a private location where both parties can feel relaxed and that they're not on display is a must. And it's also preferable in a neutral environment if possible. Remember that even constructive feedback can promote growth in individuals and relationships if it's handled appropriately. Here's a few behaviours to keep in mind. Enter the situation with the desire for a dialogue. Be tactful, show empathy and use active listening skills. Understand why you're offering the criticism. Is it appropriate and constructive? Engage in perspective taking and role reversals. Offer criticism of the person's behaviour, not of the person. Focus on a particular situation rather than a general or abstract behavior. Direct your criticism to the present rather than the past. Avoid critical overload. 
Focus criticism on the behaviours that the other person can actually change. And now to wrap up this topic with a brief look at several feedback models which help provide structure for the leader during the conversation with the employee. These are not the only models available, but are some of the more common. Whichever you choose to utilise, remember to be clear about the feedback and how it will be introduced. Be clear about the outcome you want and the changes required. In addition, allow the employee time to respond. So ask for their input and practice your active listening techniques. So we'll start with the sandwich model, which has lost popularity in more recent years, mainly because of the assumption that the employee today expect constructive feedback and feel that wrapping it in, in between praise somehow cheapens this whole process. Whether that's correct or not, we've decided to at least present the method here so that you're aware of the process. Essentially, wrap any criticism between opening and closing praise. The next model is called BOOST, which is an acronym standing for Balanced, Observed, Objective, Specific and Timely. And whilst the, the first word relates to opening with praise before criticism, the tool as a whole seems to work quite well and provide a simple, clear structure for the leader to follow. The final model, and perhaps most used today, is called SBI, meaning Situation, Behaviour and Impact, and contains many similarities to Boost. We're also providing links to these three models for further exploration as you desire. Well, that brings us to the end of our Topic 5 video, covering the basic but critical discussion on successful approaches towards feedback. Armed with this new knowledge, there's never been a better time to find one of your team and put the learnings into practice. As they say, practice makes perfect. However, before this, and because it's such a crucial area, we've decided to make the next topic in the series a follow-on to this one. So next up, topic six, achievement reviews. In this video, we continue with our feedback discussion looking at how, in some companies, they're using technology to provide all employees with instant feedback. In addition, we tackle the annual performance review process with another twist by turning the focus towards the successes rather than the failures. So that's it for now. Looking forward to chatting with you again very soon. Don't forget, leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button to receive automatic notification each time we release a new topic. Bye for now.